This is Wild Chronicles. I'm Boyd Matson. The Mekong River system is one of the biggest and most productive in the world. More than two million tons of fish hauled out of this river every year. There are over 1,000 species of fish in these waters. Only the Amazon and the Congo have greater diversity. More large fish occur in the Mekong than in any other river in the world. This may be because of the river's amazingly high productivity and large expanses of floodplain habitat. Its size and length also mean that these waters provide plenty of room to grow. Zeb Hogan believes that the giant fish of the Mekong are critically important to the survival of the region, and that they can tell us a lot about what might be happening in other great rivers. I was out here working and seeing what was happening and, uh, and wanted to do something to, tr to try to stop the fish from going extinct. The World Wildlife Fund researcher has literally immersed himself in these waters for nine years. Gone fishing, you could say, for what could be the river's greatest asset. This is the Mekong River catfish. It is a beast and has been known to weigh over 600 pounds. But they're getting harder and harder to find. Because of Zeb's work, they have finally been listed as critically endangered, although it's nearly impossible to estimate their exact population. Well, nobody really knows how many fish are left in the river. What we do know is that 100 years ago, fishers were catching hundreds, if not thousands, of fish. And these days, in a good year, fishers catch 10 to 15 fish. The giant catfish is a big part of the culture along the Mekong River. You can see them represented by ancient art. So in 2000, Hogan, who is also a National Geographic Society emerging explorer, began a one-man crusade to save the giant fish. And, and tagged and released 65 kilos. Yes. Zeb first went after the fishermen. Oh, so it really starts to increase now. <laughs> we made an agreement with fishermen, with the fishers that catch the fish, that when they caught one of the fish, they would contact us, and then we would reimburse them for the fish. We would pay them for the fish. Then we take the fish. We have a special rehabilitation tank where we'll place the fish in clean water with antibiotics. We leave the fish in the tank for a few hours. When the fish seems strong, we take that tank out into the middle of the river, tag the fish, and then release it back into the, into the Tonle Sap River so that it can continue its migration. These days, Zeb is working with the Cambodian government and has had to change his tactics. Local leaders won't allow Zeb to pay fishermen for their catch because they worry that his money actually encourages people to go after the big fish. Now these enormous creatures are protected and fishermen are required to release all giant catfish. But Zeb's work with locals suggests that the population of these aquatic giants is spiraling down. The first year I was here, they caught 11 fish. And every year since, the catch has been slowly declining. But overfishing may be only part of the problem. We only know of one spawning location for Mekong giant catfish, and that's in far northern Thailand. That area of northern Thailand is just downstream of a series of dams that China's constructed within the last 10 years. And it's also in an area that's being blasted and dredged. I never heard about anyone in the drift net catching the giant catfish. Zeb is also working to help the fish regain its celebrity status among the locals who live and depend upon the Mekong River for their livelihood. His team has produced a book about the catfish and is distributing it to children. This is a book that we did a few years ago about giant catfish. Oh, it's a story that mirrors the natural migration pattern of a giant catfish. 
It's very difficult to get the idea across of endangered species, find children a little bit more receptive to the message. Zed believes that as goes the giant catfish, so goes the Mekong. And if the river can't support these giant beasts, then it probably won't be able to support the people on its shores for much longer. Check for Wild Chronicles on your local PBS station. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. Taking science and exploration into the new millennium.